In this video, we're going to use a three distribution diagram, an R script, and the six step method suggested in the textbook to produce a 95% confidence interval for the mean of a population. Step one has to do with getting to know the population, the population parameter, the sample, and the random variable. In this case, we're interested in all the brand B batteries. The variable associated with each of those batteries is something called the TCL, or the time from installation to critical low for these batteries. The population parameter that we're interested in is the average TCL for brand B batteries. The random experiment that we're going to conduct is take a random sample of brand B batteries. The random variable is going to be the sample mean of those samples. The three distribution diagram for a one sample mean was developed in a previous video. We'll use it here to help build a roadmap for creating an R script to solve this one sample mean confidence interval problem. The variable we're interested in is the TCL for individual brand B batteries. The population parameter that we're concerned about is the mean of those TCL values. We want to find a confidence interval at a 95% confidence level for that mean. We'll need to find the sample size by counting how many items are in the sample. Once we've wrangled the data into a vector, we'll easily be able to find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. We'll need to use the sample standard deviation to approximate the standard error, and therefore we'll need to use a t-distribution. The idea behind a confidence interval is knowing something about a margin of error. If we were able to create a margin of error about the mean so that 95% of this distribution was within that margin of error of the mean, then we would be 95% confident that our X bar, the one that we got from our sample, lands in that interval. We don't know where our X bar lands. It could be anywhere on this X bar axis. But if we created a margin of error interval about X bar, and we've got a 95% chance that X bar ends up between here and here, then notice that every time it does, this orange interval captures the real population mean. So we're therefore 95% confident that this interval that we've built will actually contain the real population mean. Of course, there's a 2.5% chance that we end out here in the lower tail or another 2.5% that we end up up here. There's a 5% chance that we miss the population mean, but we're 95% confident that this interval that we built is going to contain that population mean. We'll find that margin of error by finding a critical T value so that between a negative critical C value and a positive critical C value, between here and here, that will contain 95% of the population in this T distribution. Now T values tell us how many standard deviations we need to be away. SE will tell us what, how big a standard deviation is, so our margin of error will be TC times this SE. We'll use the three distribution diagram as a roadmap for building a R script for this problem. The variable in our population is the TLC of brand B batteries. The confidence level that we're looking for is a 95%, so that's given information. The sample data is given, so we'll need to wrangle that into a vector. I've now completed that task. Data scientists say that they often spend nearly 80% of their time wrangling the data. But once we've got that data into a vector, we can easily find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Now to find SE, we're going to need to know the sample size, and we can easily find that because it's just the length of vector x. So now we have all the information to find the standard error. Now let's turn our attention to finding this critical t value. 
We'll define alpha as the area outside of that critical level value. The total area under the curve is 1. If we subtract that 95%, then all that's left are the two tails on the outside. Since the two tails are a symmetric pair, they each are the same size, so the area in one of the tails will be alpha divided by 2. And of course, that's the area in the lower tail. It's also the area in the upper tail. We'll need to use a QT function to find that critical T value, but to do that we'll need to know the degree of freedom, which is n minus 1. To use the QT function, we need to tell R what the area is below TC. We can find that area in two different ways. We know the confidence level plus the area of that little lower tail, so it would be the confidence level plus the tail. Or, we could think of it as being the total area under the curve is 1. If we take 1 minus the area in the upper tail, we're left with the area in the lower tail. So choose one of those methods to describe that area. We now know the needed number of standard deviations, and we know the size of the standard deviation, that's SE, so the ME is going to be TC times SE. The lower bound of our confidence interval will therefore be x bar minus me, and the upper bound will be x bar plus me. So let's shout out that lower bound and that upper bound. And also pay attention to the other things that you're supposed to shout out because of the uh, rubric in your written report. I've added shout outs for the ones that I think I remember, but be sure to check your rubric uh, so that you're shouting out the right things. Let's run that script. I'm using RStudio as my R compiler, but it shows you the, the script, and anytime that there's a shout out, it shows you what the value of that shout out is. There's my shout outs, there's my lower bound and the upper bound. Okay, let's put it all together in a written report. Be sure to restate the problem and the given data. Step one, get acquainted with the problem. Say what the population is, what the random variable is. In step two, we're identifying what we're needing to accomplish. We're trying to build a confidence interval at a confidence level of 95%. And we're showing how we're going to do that with the three distribution diagram. It's going to be our map for writing an R script. In step three, we're interested in changing Checking the assumptions, our primary concern here is that the sample size is large enough. In step four, we provide the R script showing how all the calculations were made, providing all of the shout outs. We're shouting out the lower bound, there it is, shouting out the UB, the upper bound, and there it is. And of course, we want to provide the answer. So you state the statistical interpretation of the problem and state the real world interpretation. Okay, there you go. Good luck.